Hi, everyone. My name is Amy Bass. I'm a product manager here at Docker, and I'd also like to introduce my colleague, Guillaume. Hi, everyone. I'm Guillaume Tardif, and I'm a staff engineer at Docker. I hope you're all having a good time with this uh, Docker birthday, and I'm really glad that we are talking about Docker extensions today. So I'll pass on back to you, Amy. Yes, thanks, Guillaume. And as Guillaume mentioned, we're really excited to give everyone here a sneak peek of a feature we've been working on for the past few months called Docker extensions. We plan to make it available for you to try with the May Docker desktop release. With this new feature, we are really hoping we can simplify developers' workflows and take out some of the complexities of your day-to-day -day tasks by integrating with some of your favorite tools and also allowing you to build your own extensions. With our release of the SDK to both partners in the community, we hope it's easier for you to create new features, integrate third-party tools, and automate existing workflows by making Docker desktop pluggable with these Docker extensions. Now I'm going to turn it over to Guillaume, who will give us a quick demo. Thanks, Amy. So yeah, I'm going to use Docker Desktop here. And uh, I've got uh, this tech preview of Docker extensions. So uh, currently, it says no extensions, no extensions installed. Um, just before I go into demoing this, so what we really want to do with extension is to make it very easy for people to integrate new features, integrate existing tools into Docker Desktop, and have everything uh, wired together in the Docker tool chain so that you don't need to switch tools. So here we have this extension section, and I'm going to have a look at uh, how to install extensions, how to navigate to them, and how to use them, and what kind of features you can expect to see there. So let's click on Add Extensions, and it, it brings me to the extension marketplace. So this really is a list of selected extensions that we've been working on in the past few months with uh, different partners. Uh, and we try to have a variety of uh, features. So we've got things related to network with style scale, things related to container management and dashboarding with Portainer. Uh, security extension with Strivey and Sneak. Uh, Telepresence brings some feature with about Kubernetes. And we also have a couple of extensions here that are not uh, uh, the work from partners, but some things that we've been working on internally at Docker. So extended logs will allow you to uh, more easily uh, see your logs and have some uh, cross container logs. And I'm going to uh, do a first demo with this usage, which is a utility to uh, uh, see how much space Docker is using on your machine and be able to uh, clean up things. So to install an extension, I can just click on install here, and it's going to download the extension if needed, and then install it on my machine. Uh, and uh, I can then navigate uh, once I've uh, once I've installed the extension, I will be able to to use it directly. So Guillaume, if I understand correctly, the extension installation process is as simple as a single click, and then you get a great utility that's easy to use. Yeah, so effectively, you don't need to navigate to a web browser to install something or to uh, copy paste some command line. Just click on install and that's ready to use. So I can then click the open button to navigate to my extension. And so this is the disk usage extension here. So you might notice we've got this, uh, this new tab here. So I can come back to my extension whenever I want. And here, the disk usage extension tells me that uh, Docker is using a bit more than uh, 5 gig of uh, disk space on my machine. Most of it is actually images. And then I can see the breakdown into various sections. So I've got images, build cache, and volumes. And so I can click on one section if I want to clean up my build cache, for example. Here it's going to clean up about 900 megs of uh, of cache. I can just click the delete button, and it's going to clean up this cache and update the uh, the the volume that is uh, displayed on my extension. So very easy to use um, utility to view how much how much this space Docker is using, and clean up some uh, some space. Um, now if we want to have a look at uh, some other examples, we can take a look at uh, one of the security extensions, for example, Snake. Uh, again, we can just click on install to, to install the extension. And Snake will allow me to scan some images. Um, so here, again, I've got my Snake tab. And in the Snake extension, I can select some images that I'd like to, uh, to scan. So let's have a look at Nginx, for example. And I will just run the click the run button, and it's going to run a sneak scan on my image, look for vulnerabilities, and then I will get a report of the vulnerabilities uh, directly in Docker Desktop here. 
So I can see I've got some critical vulnerabilities, some high, medium, etc. Uh, and for each one of them, I can see some details here. If I want more detail, I can click on this link and this will directly go to the SNIC website and uh, give me more detail about the SNIC extension. So I can come back here and yeah, Amy, you wanted to say something? Yeah, so just to recap, with only a few clicks, Sneak was a great way to scan your images for vulnerabilities, and you didn't have to know anything about the CLI or any specific CLI syntax. Yeah, effectively, so you just you just uh, enter your image name here and click run. You don't need to know the the Sneak uh, specific CLI syntax or to know about options or anything like that. So it's a really great introduction to uh, scanning scanning images for vulnerabilities without knowing too much about the the the, the details of the the syntax of the CLI. Awesome. And maybe we can have a look at uh, one last extension, uh, and then uh, yeah, you just see that uh, there is a variety of uh, of features around here. But uh, let's have a look at uh, Telscale for uh, an extension related to networking. So um, just to put a bit of context, Telscale allows you to create some VPNs, and then you can uh, connect with some of your colleagues on on the Telscale network, and only the people on the same Telscale network can access your resources. So with the Telscale extension, I'm going to just install it now. And uh, with the Telscale extension, um, this allows me to uh, bring my desktop virtual machine as a new device on a Telescale network. So I can expose my running containers uh, from my local laptop uh, on this Telescale network and share these with uh, some of my colleagues. So I can have some uh, work in progress application I'm running and uh, I can share this with my PO so, so that they can validate things uh, before I can, before I, uh, I push a pull request or before I push an image on Hub. They can test things directly on my machine while I'm uh, deploying my application locally. So I've installed this extension and now I can again open it. So I've got my Telescale tab. And uh, the first step in this extension is really to log in so that you bring your Docker desktop virtual machine in the Telescale network. So let's do this. And here I'm going to sign in with my personal uh, account here. So this I have a test network uh, set up with this email address. So once I'm logged in, I can see that I'm connected as Guillaume Tardif. Uh, so this is the, the name of my uh, Telescale network, actually. I can see my login here. I can open the admin console. This will show me the other devices connected to the same network. So here I can see that I've got my MacBook connected and I've got my Docker desktop VM connected here, which is recognized as a Linux box. And if I come back to the extension, it says I've got no container running here. And if I want to, so currently I've got no containers that are exposing ports and I can start one. So I've got here a container that will expose port 8080. It's not running yet. Uh, so I can run this here. And it's just a basic Nginx, but it could be any container that exposes ports. And uh, if I come back to Telescale, it's now listed. I can copy paste this URL and share it with anyone for access to my, uh, my container. So uh, anyone connected to the same Telescale network will have access to my container using this IP address and this, uh, this URL. And if I want to, uh, yeah, Amy, you wanted to? Yeah, I just want to say, so if I'm following correctly, Guillaume, Tailscale makes networking easy and is a great way to share your in-progress work and containers with your colleagues. Yeah, exactly. It's really to expose some work on your computer, on your uh, development machine. Uh, through Docker Desktop, you can expose your containers and have Docker Desktop connected to the Telescale network, which is, it's just a, a single click setup for this uh, for this private network. So it's really easy to set up and people can, having access to this uh, Telescale network will have access to my container. And I can test this with the open button here. So here uh, I can access my Nginx container and you can notice this is not using localhost but this is using the IP address of the Telescale network. So if you have the same the same URL uh, Amy as a product owner you can validate my application see see my work in progress before even even before I submit some PRs on, uh, on GitHub. So, uh, so we, yeah, we've seen uh, a few examples of extensions here with a variety of uh, features. Uh, 
just very quickly, we can also uninstall extensions very easily. So we've seen you can just click on install to get something set up and you can uh, uninstall an extension just by clicking the uninstall button here. And once this is uninstalled, uh, the this usage tab has been removed here from my, my list of extensions. So very easy to install, very easy to uninstall, and it brings new features in Docker Desktop. Uh, what we want is to be able to integrate existing tools, integrate uh, third party tools, and also uh, uh, new features that are uh, um, provided by the, the community into Docker Desktop. Hey, thanks, Guillaume. So if you like what you just saw from us and want to give us feedback on your experience trying out extensions, consider signing up for our developer preview program where we'll be rolling out a beta soon. And so, yeah, just to, to confirm on this, uh, this is not yet publicly available, but uh, we'll make the extensions and also the SDK of extensions available for DockerCon, so around uh, early May. Thank you very much.